The LC convertible is, says Lexus, one of the most sought-after vehicles we've produced. It's the first time the brand has properly ventured up towards the three-figure price bracket, and to justify that, this open-top sports car will have to be very desirable indeed. All the signs are that it is. It comes equipped to take on the luxury convertible segment's very top contenders with drive dynamics that work on the track as well as on the highway. Plus, there's styling that'll cause a stir in the high street and a gorgeous cabin. Not long ago, if Lexus had launched a car into this segment, it would have been a direct competitor to the Mercedes S-Class Cabriolet. But it says a great deal for the way that the LC Coupe has changed our perceptions of what this brand's dynamically capable of, that we now have no trouble at all in perceiving this LC convertible as a rival to far more sporting, large, luxury soft tops like a Porsche 911 Cabriolet. There's only one engine on offer, a 32-valve, old-school, normally aspirated petrol V8, but it's more than up to the job of moving this car along very quickly indeed. It storms to 62 in five seconds, en route to 168 miles an hour. Inevitably, this 457 bhp 5-litre powertrain lacks the torque that would come as part of the turbo technology that all this car's competitors use, but Lexus reckons that you won't really register that thanks to the trick that this V8-powered LC has up its sleeve, a 10-speed automatic gearbox. The idea is that with so many gears, you simply won't notice the atmospheric 5-litre units relative lack of pulling power because of the way this car compensates with such a closely stacked multitude of ratios. This open top model represents the Lexus brand's first use of a fabric folding top rather than one with metal folding panels. It doesn't activate quite as quickly as the roof of an open topped uh, Aston Martin Vantage but a raising or lowering time of just 15 seconds is more than acceptable and it can happen at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. With the roof in place, refinement is virtually as good as that of a fixed top LC Coupe and you can really concentrate on this car's surprising drive dynamics. Yes, it does slightly favour comfort over dynamism as opposed to a rival Porsche 911 Cabriolet in which it's the other way around, but we think that many potential customers might prefer that. And if you wish, you can improve handling bite by stretching to the top Sport Plus package model we're trying here, which includes uh, more responsive variable ratio steering and a Torsen limited slip differential to help to get power down through the corners. Issues concerning WLTP rated running cost efficiency won't trouble a typical LC convertible customer very much, but for the record, the combined cycle fuel figure is 24.1 mpg and the CO2 reading is 275 grams per kilometre. Lexus likes to set itself high aspirations in engineering and design. Here, the objective was to create the world's most beautiful open-topped car. No pressure then, unlike its two open-air Lexus predecessors, this car has a fabric folding top, not an origami-style folding roof made up of heavy metal panels. As you'll see when you activate the roof. Now, this raises in just 15 seconds. Making the silhouette attractive with a top-up like this was a major priority for design chief Tadeo Mori. As he correctly points out, very few convertibles manage to be stylish and elegant with their roofs in place, but to our eyes anyway, this one does. One of the principal design challenges was to minimise bulkiness in the bodywork in the shoulder area immediately behind the rear seats. Now this was achieved by creating an extra fold in the soft top so it can be stowed in the area uh, just behind those rear seats between the left and right suspension towers. Enough with that. If the exterior looks of this LC convertible 
don't sell the car to you, then we think it's very possible that the cabin experience will. Once inside, you're treated to the usual Japanese omatenashi Lexus welcome. Uh, that word encapsulates the ancient oriental concept which describes one's ability to anticipate the needs of another even before they arise. So you're looked after by seat heaters, neck heaters and a heated steering wheel. All of these are automatically activated and that depends on the outside temperature and also the position of the fabric top. With the roof down like this, uh, the temperature and the climate system, uh, the airflow volume of those two items are automatically regulated according to factors such as the amount of sunlight available, uh, the outside temperature and also the vehicle speed. Now these leather seats, they're absolutely superb as they should be in any good GT convertible. Uh, they feature a clever two-part design in which the main part of the seat back drapes over the shoulder area of the seat and wraps around the back. Uh, there's more unique design in the unusual instrument binnacle that you view through this three-spoke wheel here. Uh, it's a touch-over button, this wheel, but it does feel great to hold. The gauges you view are based on those of the brand's old LFA supercar with a central virtual rev counter and a digital speedo dial that on the press of this steering wheel button slides sideways to the right to reveal another screen with trip computer, audio, safety and settings options. What about the rear seats? Yes, you do get them. Uh, you wouldn't do on rival Jaguar F-Type and Aston Martin Vantage convertible models. Although if you add in the optional mesh wind deflector, uh, you won't be able to use them. Now, unfortunately, the room on offer turns out to be horribly tight, which you kind of expect on a small, cheap convertible, but you feel less inclined to forgive on a larger, more expensive one like this. Legroom is, well, it's extremely tight. And when the top's up, the sloping roof line means that even adults of quite normal height will have their necks uncomfortably cricked against the roof lining. Now we mentioned the optional wind deflector earlier. You might decide you can do without that because a smaller wind deflector, which doesn't encroach on rear passenger space, comes as standard. Uh, this tiny transparent panel between the rear headrests here. Let's finish with a look at boot space. Now earlier we mentioned the way that the soft top, uh, its extra fold allows for a more compact roof sandwich, which can be stowed directly behind the rear seats alongside the hydraulic motor system. Now in theory, this ought to mean uh, rather less of an encroachment onto boot space, which is important here uh, because the standard LC Coupe really doesn't have too much of that, just 197 litres. And that's a bit of a major failing for a luxury sports GT. Now, despite all the design ingenuity, the cargo area shrinks in size here to 149 litres. There are four silver tie-down points here, but the underfloor area, that's taken up with a battery. So, pack light. The LC convertible is a logical extension of the Lexus product range, but for those fortunate enough to eventually own one, it'll represent anything but a logical purchase decision. This is a kind of car that you don't want to have to sensibly justify. It's a way to reward yourself for decades of toil. Previously, if you thought such a thing and you didn't want a track-tamed Roadster-style model and you couldn't quite stretch to a convertible from Bentley or Rolls-Royce, something of a compromise was required. Either the luxury of a Mercedes S-Class Cabriolet or a BMW 8 Series convertible or the sharper handling of a Porsche 911 Cabriolet or a Maserati Cabrio. This Lexus has a pretty good stab at providing the best of both worlds and that makes it very desirable indeed.